beautiful day outside, wasn't it? <laughs> Sun came out as I was driving over here. Uh, we'd like to look at the announcements that are on your insert. So take a look at that. Um, today at 11.10, or as soon as we can after worship, we're going to gather downstairs in the fellowship hall for a trustees meeting. Bring your snack with you, or your lunch, whatever you want to call it. Um, Wednesday night, the bishop is going to be at the First United Methodist Church in Portsmouth, and this will be his last time on our district. He will be leaving our conference at the end of the summer, so this will be a time for us to say best wishes and farewell to our bishop, and also just to maybe ask him some questions about other things that might, you might have on your mind. So um, I plan to go, but I will be leaving from my home. I thought I would be leaving from here, but I have an eye doctor appointment that afternoon, so I've got to go back home. So, uh, but maybe some of you can carpool to go over to Portsmouth. And then, of course, our Christmas fair is on the 23rd. Um, Cheryl, you want to say more about that? This Wednesday, we're getting together again to do anything that you want to work on for the fair. I have a couple of things, and if you have any ideas, please bring them with you. That will be at 10 o'clock. Wednesday. Okay, 10 o'clock Wednesday to meet, to talk about, or to do crafts. Okay. Zoe? Uh, I have a list that I will, at Fellowship, bring around for the Christmas fair luncheon. And uh, just uh, something like breads and things like that. People, I would like them to. So you have a sign up list, is what yeah, you say? Yes, a sign up list, yeah. Okay, downstairs? Yeah. All right. There's also a sign-up sheet for the Advent study. Um, if we have enough people that want to do it on Thursday afternoon around 3, 3.30, I'll do an extra class at that time. So uh, I will do a morning class probably Thursday mornings, and then an afternoon class Thursday afternoon if we get enough people to sign up for the afternoon class. Eileen. Uh, I'm going to be looking for pies for the bake uh, table for um, the fair. And, uh, I would like you to think about what kind of pie you want to do so that we don't end up with 15 pumpkin pies and you know one apple pie like that so that we're not all bringing the same kind. Uh, so just let me know what kind you're bringing and then we, I can work from there. Uh, and also I'll be going to the bishops thing on Wednesday if any, um, on the 13th if anyone wants to uh, carpool from here. I know where the church is in Portsmouth. Okay, hey, thank you, Eileen. I'm sorry I couldn't go with you. I didn't realize my schedule first. Any other announcements? I think we might have an announcement about the Roast Beef Supper, right? Yeah. Last mm night -hmm. uh, was the Septum. I'm going to go first part of December, October, I think, when I'm doing it, 
told him to do it or not do it. I have to decide. So you have a deviated septum and the doctor wants to do surgery on it? Yeah, probably in December sometime. Okay, we'll keep you on our prayer list. Thank you. My sister, Molly Millizer, will be having basically open heart surgery tomorrow in Cleveland, Ohio. So I want to keep her in my, your prayers too. Any joys, you know, celebrations, things that you're grateful for. Think about it because I'm going to ask you for it later too. Gail. I am grateful for the freedom to worship and the people that fought for that. Yes. It is Veterans Day, and so we do thank the veterans for our freedom. And I was at a race yesterday, and I saw a t-shirt that said 22 a day, and I asked the gentleman what it was, and he said 22 veterans a day die by suicide. So I think that we also need to keep in mind the people we pray for and with their struggles. In case you didn't hear what she said, she said 22 a day on a t-shirt meant that 22 veterans a day commit suicide. So we need to keep the veterans in our prayers so that they can get the help they need for PTSD and so forth. Last night we were very short-handed, but we did it. Yes. And it came out with a smile on our faces. So yes, yes. <laughs> Speak for yourself, he said. <laughs> All right, well, if nothing further, let us begin our, oh, you have one? Oh. Okay. I want to say I'm very grateful for my church family because we're like a family here. We love each other. Okay. When it's time for the pastoral prayer, instead of showing pictures like I did last week, today I want you to think of something that made you feel the wonder of God, the awesomeness of God. So we'll ask for those kind of, just pop up and say a word or two about what made you this past week think about the wonder of God and, and the awesomeness of God and made your life wonderful. So think about that. So let us uh, begin now with uh, the illuminating the shadows. This week, our scripture speaks of storing up treasures in heaven. We will see that the treasures Jesus speaks of are the riches that come with the outpouring of relationships love, grace, and hospitality. These things are uncorruptible rather than the accumulation of things that can become false gods. How we spend our treasures of time, energy, and money indicates what we love, what we value, what we want to impact to the world. This week we are invited to become more courageous, intentional, and visionary about how we serve the world through what we spend. And I would add that would be for individuals as well as our congregation as a church. So let us sing Be Thou My Vision, the first verse as I light the candle. Mm -hmm.
Let us pray. Redeeming God, open our hearts to receive your words of hope for a wonderful life and the joy that comes from being faithful servants of yours in this world. Help us hear anew your words that we may become more faithful stewards of the gifts you give us each day. For we ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, number 400, and protected on the wall.
We're going to be singing that song every week as the children come forward, and then we'll sing the second verse after the children leave. So next week we're going to try it as a round, though, so beware. <laughs> well, good morning, boys and girls. I shouldn't say boys and girls, there's only one here. I'm going to uh, say that most of you are older than two years old, right? <laughs> But when you were about that age, or maybe around four, you started to ask the question, why? Do you ever remember asking why? Yeah? Well, or how come? I bet the parents remember those questions, how, come, and why. So, let's recreate that right now. What I want you to do, every time I point to you children, I want you to throw your hands up in the air and say, why? Okay? So I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and after every question, when I point to you, say, why? Okay? Both of you. Will you put your toys away? Because we need to tidy the house. Because our friends are coming. Why don't you join them on the why, okay? <laughs> because our friends are coming over. Why? Because we love to get together with our friends. Why? Because their company makes us happy. Why? Because, well, they love us. Why? Because, well, I guess because we are made to have friends. Why? Because it is God's way of helping us to know we are not alone. Why? Wait a minute. How did we get to that from where you put your toys away? Hmm. The answer to that is because when we ask why, when we wonder long enough, when we get curious, even simple chores can remind us of what is important if we drill down far enough. So thank you children for helping us to remain curious. We adults sometimes forget to keep digging deeper and we sometimes we forget how rich we are every day. So your gift of wonder to us all, we are grateful for that, and we are grateful for you. So there's a little prayer, and I'm going to ask everybody, including you girls, to repeat after me. Wonderful God, Wonderful God. we give you thanks, give you thanks. For, the gift of for the gift of wondering to remind us, to remind us. how the little things are connected to the bigger things. And that everything can be full of you. Amen. And now as the children leave, let us sing the second verse of the wonderful full life. faith. The belief that, like Jesus, our faith is not just an idea, but it gives, gets lived our, out in our actions in the world. This week we integrate money and meaning by looking in at the courageous vision for our presence and impact in the world. In the movie, it's a wonderful life. George Bailey gets a wonderful gift of seeing what the world would have been like without him in it. Clement's old body, the angel sent to help George, tell them this. You've been given a great gift, George. A chance to see what the world would be like without you. Strange, isn't it? Each person's life touches so many other lives, and when they aren't around, it leaves an awful hole, doesn't it? 
By George Bailey, we sometimes need some help to see our true value. This is not the net worth we have, but the worth we give in the form of our offerings of love and presence and relationship. Let us prepare our hearts for the scripture this day. Thank you, thank you, Charles and Steve. Let us sing, Be Thou My Vision, the second verse, as printed on the screen. inviting us to see that it is the motivation and the state of the heart 
that is the key to righteousness or to right living. Storing up treasures in heaven is to concentrate on the riches that come with the outpouring of a right relationship and love and grace and generosity. These things are uncorruptible rather than the accumulation of things that can become gods in and of themselves because we cannot serve God and wealth or money. How we spend our gifts, the treasures of time, energy, and money, indicates what we love, what we value, and what we want to impact the world with. The question today to consider are, what do we value or treasure? What are we spending our money and time upon? The answers to these questions be become what Maggie Kulik in her book, Integrating Money and Meaning, calls courageous vision for our presence and impact in the world. This is the bedrock of how we spend our assets, time, energy, and money, so that we approach life with attentiveness and intentionality to make it a wonderful life. For many people, money is the answer to a wonderful life, or I say, just a wonderful life, just put it that way, like the regular spelling. They spend time working so they can spend money on the things they treasure. It seems that we as a society believe that we need to work as much as we can, to earn as much money as we can, possibly can, so we can afford to have the things that save us time so that we can enjoy life, and it begins all over again. So we can have a wonderful life. But is it really so wonderful? The main purpose of money, if you really think about it, is to have our basic needs met. Yet many of us are not happy with having just our basic needs met. You know, shelter, clothes, food. We want more things, more clothes, more tools, the latest car model, or the latest television, the latest cell phone, for example. We accept the belief that money can give us a wonderful life before we die, and especially when we retire. We know we have a limited amount of time to live on earth, and we want to enjoy it as much as we can. Ultimately, however, no amount of money will keep us from dying. We can either live in total denial and fear of that fact, or live in relationship with it. There was a popular song several years ago uh, by Tim McGraw, Live Like You Were Dying. Anybody remember that song? Yeah? The song was about a man in his early 40s who learned that his life was terminal. terminal. And when, when asked how did he take the news, he answered, I went skydiving. I went Rocky Mountain climbing, I went 2.7 seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu, and I loved deeper, and I spoke sweeter, and I gave forgiveness I've been denying. The song continues with how the man finally developed the relationship with his wife, his father, and his friends that he should have done a long time ago, and that he even read the good book. He reflected on his life and learned to view each day as a gift and to think about eternity. The refrain concludes with the man telling the listener, someday I hope you get the chance to live like you were dying. While the song, Live Like You Were Dying, has some good points to make about life, about how we should live, I don't, I don't believe it goes quite far enough because an eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die attitude has some merit, but I believe it is lacking in referencing what is truly important, our relationship with God. The, I will grant you, however, that the song pleadingly refers to things relating to God, like the good book and forgiveness, but for the most part, the emphasis is on having a good time. And if we think that skydiving is one of the most important things to do before we die, I think there are some serious problems. We are to put God first, to love God and others as ourselves. To live as if we were dying means striving to obey God's commands 
and Jesus' teachings. It means working for peace and justice, feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, and are helping the poor and needy. If we look at life from an eternal perspective and how to gain treasures in heaven, all of us should live every day as if we were dying. Or in reality, like I said, we are. From the day we were born, we start to age. And each new day brings us closer to our death. The reality is that for most of us, we have no idea what day that will be. It could be today as we're driving home from church. Who knows? Most of us go through our lives believing we will live to a ripe old age. And it is only as we get older, and I've noticed this too, or told that we have a terminal illness, which thank goodness I don't, that we give much thought to dying or salvation or eternal life, things that have an eternal perspective. Every day, people of faith are to live as if we were dying, but not for our own selfish enjoyment. I do believe that God did create us to enjoy life, to have life and have it abundantly, as it says on the front of your bulletin. But we are also to glorify God in all that we do. And that means serving God by serving others, not just ourselves. We do not need to hope for that someday we will have the chance to live as if we were dying. We don't need to hope that someday we'll have that chance. We do have that chance now. The bottom line for many of us is that we need a, what Maggie Kulik in her book calls a courageous vision or an eternal perspective of how we spend our time and how we will transform our money practices to align with our values, our beliefs about what God wants us to do. Maggie Kulik has several suggestions in her book, several practices that I won't go into all of them here, just a couple. Uh, but one exercise is to meditate about whether you have five to ten years to live. What would you do if you knew you had five to ten years to live? What would you do with your life if you had one year to live? And what would you do if you had only one day? What will you do with the time you have left? This was a helpful exercise for me and, and made me wonder about my impact on the world. And I wondered about how I could change my spending habits, the spending time and spending money, with the time I have left. Getting to see and witness how I could affect the world for the good by offering my resources of time, talent, money, and energy more generously was high on my list. It made me want to spend more time on, on missions and, and volunteer work and support organizations who are affecting the things I care about in the world. Another thing to, uh, another suggestion to help you determine your courageous vision is to make a gratitude list instead of going shopping the next time this urge arises. I have this habit of when I'm feeling frustrated or stressed, I go shopping. I don't need more things. Instead, I want to stop and make a gratitude list for the things I do have. Or if that won't work for you, or it does, you could try another one also, cause write down at least three things every day that you're grateful for. Maybe first thing you get up in the morning or before you go to sleep at night. Three things every day that you're grateful for. This gratitude list becomes part of your courageous vision that we or you are intentionally naming in order to bring your money practices into the realm of an eternal perspective or spiritual practice. You will also want to identify your gifts and talents. Some of these may be obvious, such as singing or cooking or writing, while other talents might be not as obvious, such as making people laugh, being friendly, or being organized, or, or good with pictures or plants or animals. Recognizing and embracing your gifts 
and talents is an important step in deepening your relationship with yourself and aligning those talents with your courageous vision. Last week, we spent some time looking back on our lives and our attitude toward money, you know, with the characters in the uh, Wonderful Life movie, how they, uh, their attitude toward money. Today, we are looking in to our hearts to see if our attitude toward money matches our vision of how we want to live. Carl Jung, who was a, a great psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, wrote, your vision will become clear only when you look inside your own heart. Who looks outside dreams. Who looks inside awakes. Looking inside our hearts can wake us up to the reality of our life. Looking in is also a good way to consider the things that make us curious, as we talked about with the children's time. Things that make us wonder why. For example, as I said earlier, I like to go shopping when I get distressed. So I ask myself, I wonder why I have this desire to go shopping when I get depressed or stressed out or frustrated. And that can be a question to help me compassionately uncover a false belief about the things, the earthly treasures, to make me happy, to, feel, to make me feel safe and secure. And then I can go deeper, looking in, and ask, I wonder what my faith has to say about what really offers the security I desire. Looking in requires a deepening, deepening self-awareness, becoming more in tune with what truly feels life-giving and what feels bread-producing will give you good clues about what your heart's desire for the long haul and therefore how we spend our time and money, what treasures we pursue. The beginnings of your vision might be quite small, a realization that you want to add a morning walk or a five-minute meditation to your routine or, or change your eating habits. Or it may seem like the seed of something grander, like changing your career or how you spend your money. Whatever it is, whatever your vision is, trust it. Even if you feel only the initial stirrings of this vision, follow it. And that's where the courageous part comes in. It takes courage to make the changes necessary to fulfill your vision. Whatever you decide, remember that it is possible to make more money, but you cannot make more time. It is what we do with our time that helps us determine our courageous, courageous vision. Think about one of our culture's mottos, time is money. You've heard that before, I'm sure. Or consider the motto, motto of the tiny country of Bhutan, which according to the secretary of the Bhutan Gross National Happiness Commission, their motto is not time is money, time is life. So which motto rings true for you? We have the same amount of time. What we do with it in regard to money determines what tr we treasure. And Matt Skinner, a theologian, writes, the true value of monetary wealth lies not in its power to accumulate possessions in pursuit of power and comfort. Wealth enables generosity, and a generous heart has its sights set on God. Jesus' statement about where your treasure is works in two ways. First, our use of wealth display, displays where our hearts reside. The uses to which we put money but our innermost selves care for most deeply. Second, our hearts can be made to follow where our treasure goes. Think about that. When we invest in certain charitable causes and people, our hearts will expand to care for them more deeply. 
This means that a person need not wait until she or he can muster enough heartfelt concern for the needy before writing a check. Giving a gift, putting money toward uses that promote God's vision of righteousness, may help a heart receive a taste of what God desires for the world. I believe the direction for our lives and the choices we make can be more or less aligned with spirit, love, compassion, and the course with God. Pay attention to this alignment. Once we discern what is truly important, we will discover the richness of a wonderful life as we were created to be. We were created to be in a relationship with God, to love God and our neighbor in all that we do. A courageous vision can change over time. But the purpose of it should be the treasure and joy of giving, of not making so much money and taking so much of it in this world that others cannot have abundant life. And as Gandhi said, live simply so that others may simply live. Amen. We come to the part of our service called Responding Creativity. Let us sing, Thank You, Lord. treasure of the people they encounter. So let's take a few minutes and just say what you uh, think might be something that you saw this past week. I'm going to try and write it down to my paper here. Uh, Sharon. My great granddaughter just turned one and it's such a beautiful sight. Okay, so the granddaughter. Anyone else? 
Let us turn to God in prayer. Creating God, we give you thanks for the awesome wonders of creation, for the abundant feast of family and friends, the plentiful riches of your presence among us. We give thanks. We are grateful, O oh God, on this Veterans Day weekend that you know every veteran by name. You know their deeds, their hard work, and their perseverance. You know their needs, both material and spiritual. Please draw each one closer to you and grant them all the peace that passes understanding, the peace of Christ to rule in their hearts and joy in your presence with eternal pleasures are, are at your right hand forevermore. We are grateful for granddaughters, for the first flake of snow, for someone who donates food when they had nothing else to give, for the sight of bluebirds being fed, and for the vision of sunrise and sunset. Loving God for those times when life seems too much, too much stress, too little assurance. Be with us, O oh God. We pray not only for ourselves, but for all our brothers and sisters in faith, and for those who are afflicted or oppressed or hungry or ill or grieving. We pray for those named in our sharing time earlier this morning and those whom you place upon our hearts and lips even now. And lastly, O oh Lord, but not least, we pray that we might discern a courageous vision for Berwick United Methodist Church and for your church around the world today. May we be faithful to the vision you set before us and live as Christ commands us. We ask these things in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And now let us sing, Thank You, Lord, one more time. <laughs> questions and one of them was what my sense of wonder and awe is in this church and it's hard for me to separate my church from God there's always a sense of wonder and awe in God um, that doesn't mean that it isn't always hard being a Christian um, I have a sense of wonder even last night without so few people to work we got through it and it was very calm, considering. Um, I guess my, my sense of wonder is that after all the stupid things that I have done, and the stupid things I will do, God is still there for me, and he still loves me. Even when I question him. I've had a lot of questions lately. It's been a rough month. I lost my 45-year-old niece and godchild. She went to bed Saturday, uh, Friday night and did not wake up. Three children 
and a husband left behind. And when I went to the funeral, the priest said, she went home. She was taken home. It was her time. And my thought was, how can it be her time? It's not her time. She has three children that need her and a husband. But I have to remind myself that he has a bigger, broader picture. And what I'm here for is to help everyone through this, including myself. He helps me. Um, and I think I have to look at it, if I didn't have faith, how would I get through these things? If I didn't have church, sometimes you miss church for one reason or another, you're sick or you have something else, somewhere else you have to be. That week is very strange. I don't even, can't even keep track of the days when I don't go to church on Sunday. It's like, what day is it? Um, it's what starts my week. It's how I get re-energized. I have a lot of questions after today's sermon. Um, one of the other questions that was asked of me is, what do I think is possible for our church as a vision? We worry so much about having enough people to work the roast beef supper. I worry about the church fair. It always comes and it goes, and it's okay. Um, if it's meant to be, it will be, God will help us through this. We're not doing this alone. Uh, and I think as far as our church goes, I think we're in the next 10 years, we are going to have to be, have our eyes open and be more open to change. And I know it, that's a hard thing, but I think the only way church as we see it is going to work is if we are open to maybe some changes. Maybe Sunday school won't be on Sunday morning. Maybe it will be on Monday night. Who knows? Um, we don't want to change. I don't want things to change. But they may have to. And we have to be open to that. And to really listen to what God's showing us and telling us. And I think we need to remember that it's not all about fundraising, it's about nurturing each other. Um, we need to do things for one another. And I think we do a good job of that here. And I know that if I have a problem, I know I can come to church and the people around me will build me up. Um, I know that we don't always agree, but I think we can agree to disagree. And I just want to say thank you for being my church family, and I hope I've answered the questions in such a way that you can understand. I think we all come at this in a different perspective, but I am thankful we have the church and hope that we go on for another hundred years. Who knows? Thank you. So um, let's uh, have the ushers come forward for the morning off. While the uh, ushers are coming forward and taking the offering, we'd like to invite everybody to in their in their pew pick up the uh, green book, the small green book that's in there, and turn in that green book to 3188. And as the, as, uh, the Garys are uh, receiving the offering, uh, we invite you to sing with us on this. Now, this is a great, it's a very singable tune, a lot of fun to do, and the nice thing about it is it gives you an opportunity to see music as uh, as we see it oftentimes and i'm going to walk you through it a little bit so you know where you where you are as we sing this song obviously you start at the very beginning with verse one you drop down four five stanzas you'll see a, a little note that says refrain 
And on the uh, second line up from the bottom, you'll notice a special little, it uh, looks like an S. Just remember that for a second. Okay? You go on to the second page and you see the first ending. Obviously, you repeat back and you do the second verse. Go all the way through, past that funny looking sign, and you go to the second ending on the second page. Beneath that second ending on the second page is the bridge. This is a great tool that's used to kind of transfer from one section to another. That goes down for three lines, and there's a first ending on that. And you'll notice that it has a repeat sign, so it goes back and repeats back to the, to the second part of that bridge, where Break My Heart is. But when you come down the second time, you take the second ending, and if you look at the next to the last measure, in the next to the bottom line, you'll see a thing that says DS. That just simply means to go back to that funny looking sign that we talked about, the second line up from the bottom, and you sing there, and then when you get down to the end of that one, the third time it tells you to go over to the coda, which is the very bottom. So kind of sing along with us. You, you, you'll get it very quickly, you'll be amazed. It's a fun song to sing. It's one that uh, uh, was in our, in our uh, plan book for, for the conference. And uh, we've done it before here, but we've never done it for ever, with everybody doing it. So here we go.
say the prayer. Gracious God, looking inward, we recognize our own hesitation to see my Give us the courage to bring the vision of your hospitality and justice to the life now and for the future. May these earthly treasures we offer become a path to treasures of well-being for those who will be touched by it. In the name of the one who called all to the true treasures of life with God, Jesus Christ. Our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. <clears throat> Let us join hands and make a circle to sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Oh.